Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Tiffany Harlick and on the podcast today I have one of my very best friends, Leisha Barnett. You know Leisha because she has been teaching uh, human design courses through our platform and she's also a professional human design analyst. And if you haven't had your human design chart done, you want to have it done by Leisha. Um, so I'm so excited to talk about this topic. We've been doing an October special on um, death and dying and aliens and Bigfoot and cauldrons and pumpkins and all kinds of uh, fun little October topics. And so Leisha, you know, she just taught a class for us about Bar Bardo. And I was laughing because in the class, I was like, Bardo. <laughs> <The whole time. laughs> um, but Bardo, I, it's like tarot. I just forgive me, guys. Um, but, you know, Alicia, um, I, I asked if she would come back on the podcast to talk about it because it's such an interesting topic. If you haven't um, dealt with death or dying before, this is one of the topics that you you kind of it's so great to have ahead of time in your the realm of possibilities for your own process of dying in the light and your own process of uh, conscious dying um, and that process that you may help others with in your soul contracts. So uh, this is kind of an opportunity to keep an open mind, to keep an open heart, to feel what resonates with you and to just leave the rest. Um, so with that, thank you, Leisha. Welcome back. <laughs> thank you, Tiffany. Um, and I'd love to just start by your just sharing what Bardo is. Yeah. Um, so I had not really heard the term Bardo, except for Bridget Bardo, who's my banks. Influence. Your bank specialist? Uh, my, my, <laughs> my inspiration for banks. Um, but until I met human design, however, then kind of retroactively realized or learned that it's, it's a term that is from, I guess, from Tibetan Buddhism, and it has a lot of other applications. So just in even just looking it up, like Googling it, um, Bardo is the state of existence intermediate between two lives on earth so it's kind of between death like it's the death and dying process all the way through to you know kind of like until the next incarnation um so in you know in tibetan tradition after death and before one's next birth when one's consciousness is not connected to a physical body kind of when we're up you know in the spirit consciousness field um mm -hmm. one experiences a variety of phenomena so what, what human design Bardo taught me is it's really the correct dying. You know, human design teaches us like our body graph, our strategy, our three teaches us how to about correct living according to our particular, precise, specific design as shown in the body graph and, you know, other substructure. So what, what the Bardo process teaches us in human design is really the correct dying. How, how do humans in general, you know, um, go through the death process and, and then we can even get more specific, but as for, for this definition, it's really the correct dying process and what is needed. Okay. Not a small topic. <laughs> no, quite a large <laughs> dunk to take on. Yes. It, right. And it's, it's not about, um, you know, I think that, that many cultures share this belief, right? Like we were joking also in class about um, being in India and wearing the mala beads and that being kind of your dog tag for Krishna to be like, oh yeah. And you, having Krishna on the mind and, and saying the names of God, right? Whatever that is in your culture, just having the names of God on repeat as a meditative state as your ticket to the other side to find, you know, your soul family, your, your group of belonging, your sense of connection to spirit. And so this is just one of the lenses. And I love that human design even has a lens into this process. And I love what you just said about, it gives you a model for correct living for yourself as yourself. That's totally unique, but there's also that for the dying process. And so, um, you know, there's there's this concept that you were teaching about um in terms of the dying process and being on do not disturb for 72 hours which was a cute way of putting it and and, it, and it's something that you know you shared that you did with your mom that you talked to her about and to your family members about and there's a whole process that i think is such a beautiful thing that you were able to do and I think it's something um, just to put on people's minds as possibilities 
uh, as ways to celebrate their crossing over. So what is this whole 72 hour do not disturb yeah. thing, first of all? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny that the title of the slide is D&D &D for 72 hours. <laughs> um, and so, but it, it, and it's just, a, like you said, it's a, it's a funny modern way to say it, but it's um, in human design. So this, it's, it's about dying correctly, but it's about leaving this plane correctly. So that what we learned in our lifetime with who we're designed to be, how we are designed with our consciousness filter and our experiences and what we alchemized in our life, that can actually if, if we die correctly, if we leave this plane correctly, which has to do with the 72 hours, do not disturb, is that consciousness, the evolution goes back up into the consciousness field and that affects all of, you know, the consciousness of the planet, the, of the universe, um, of the entire field, what we learned in our lifetime with who we are. Mm -hmm. So that that's the biggest theme for me. Um, and so then the, the do not disturb for 72 hours is, um, I mean, there's very practical pieces that we can go into like very mundane, like how do you do it? What do you do? And all the different things. Essentially the concept is in order for our, the elements of our being to cross over into that next phase of beingness mm -hmm. where we do not have a physical body, it the, the vehicle needs to remain undisturbed for 72 hours, for three days. Now there's a lot to that, but um, within human design, the, when we look at our body graph, we see both the personality side and the design side, right? The conscious and the unconscious, the mind and the body, the unconscious lives in the body. It's the vehicle. So in the center of the earth, the mantle of the earth is like the, the earth's design crystal. So these are actually called crystals of consciousness, the design crystal, the personality crystal. So at the time of biological death when the body dies when the vehicle dies the design crystal kind of just immediately is quickly you know brought down goes back down into the earth and joins that design crystal bundle at the center of the earth in the earth's mantle mm -hmm. which makes sense right we're made of the earth it's the earth's body we have a body we're made of the same elements like that design element is rejoins its design crystal bundle um the personality crystal is the consciousness piece. It's like the, the, the mind, it's like the spirit without the body kind of thing. And so at death, those two crystals separate. So our conscious and our unconscious, our body and our mind, the body goes back down into its little home in the earth, no matter what, right? Whether we're given D and D for 72 hours or not. And the personality crystal, the spirit is, you know, if done correctly, and that's going to be the key, um, it will go back up to the consciousness field to its soul family, which in human design, we call the Godhead. We don't have to go into that, but it has to do with, you know, your, your chart and where things fall and different things. You go back to that consciousness field and that's your personality crystal bundle that you stay until the next incarnation. When another design crystal calls your personality crystal down to the earth to be in mechanical form whether it's human or whatever it is, you know, we can't, we can't know. We can't know any of this, right, no. but this we can't is know what any of knowledge it. says, right? Like we can't know any of this, we cannot. right? There's like no way it's, a, it's an unknown. But yes. So, <laughs> so, so the 72 hours allows that process of the first, the, you know, the, the vehicle dies, the bi biological death occurs and we mark that as the time of death. However, it takes up to 72 hours for the personality crystal go to go through its process and it's like, there's potentially a state of a little bit of confusion. Like, wait, I don't have a body. Like I'm in this giant like field of sort of not having a physical form or feeling like the earthly plane anymore, but I'm still on this earthly plane. And it takes that three days to, for it to go through its, you know, three stages of Bardo and get back up into its personality crystal consciousness field. So that's so a I gist of the 72. <laughs> I love this because it's like, there's two kinds of listeners I'm imagining right now. And one is like, this is some kooky stuff, right? Like this is some kooky. How do these ladies know? Right? <laughs> like, like, and then I'm also thinking about the other kind of listener that's like, she said crystals. And I'm just like, what? I have a personality crystal? Because that's how I was when I heard uh, me too. personality crystal. I'm like, tell me more about that. Like, because there's something in there that, <laughs> exactly. There's something that sparks 
a resonance with you know what you're saying but it's oh. true like there is a resonance and that's why I'm interested and that's why I uh, got on the rabbit hole with you to learn more about this um you know, uh, and so I feel like wherever you are listening, where if you're like, this is absolutely nuts, or this is absolutely fascinating, it still should spur some kind of um, mutative thoughts about death and dying process for you. And it's one of those non negotiables in life, right? So, um, you know, Alicia is talking about the, the personality crystal and the design crystal. And also another funny thing that happened in class is I saw that slide for the first time and I, I, I wasn't thinking about D and D being do not disturb. I was like, what dungeon and dragons game yeah. is he talking Which about? Which is funny because my team does play dungeons and dragons with their friends. So it's like multiple meanings or you can put dungeon, like dungeons and dragons for 72 hours. That's what they're going through. So they get back up to the home consciousness <laughs> it also kind of fits it's really funny to me, I like something you just said uh, mm. I want to just throw in it's like it might be like what and like or you might be thinking well this person died and they didn't remain undisturbed for 72 hours which we can talk about but yeah you might be having all these like I'm not too sure about this or whatever and all that's fine but for me it's almost like it's like there's an element of truth that I feel that my mind doesn't even really understand, but it's like almost like a remembrance of like, aha, yeah, mm -hmm. like that. So that's how it felt to me in my experience with, you know, my kind of my mom's dying process and things, which we can well, talk about, but yeah. I do. I want to talk about that. And I want to talk about the idea of like, well, what happens if you didn't D and D mm -hmm. or what happens if you had a traumatic yes. death experience and you were all at once. Yes or things like this. Um, before we get into that, one little tiny piece, uh, one huge galactic piece that I want to touch on is <clears throat> that there's also, um, from the HD perspective, a uh, the stage, like a different sequence. Like there's a different sequence that you go through the hex, is it the hexagram? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you explain there's, that well, part? I think there's six. Different there's actually, yeah, there's six phases there's six stages of bardo yeah depending on your design you go through it's a very specific sequence you go through in that dying process but it's not like one two three and yours is one two three it's dependent on your chart and your crystals right. how which stage you start at and i thought that was really neat and i totally went and looked up everybody i know's uh, sequences <laughs> awesome. and, and so um i just wanted to touch on that in case anybody was really interested in this to give them the bullet points to be able to go back and research and look up some things. Um, if this is super fascinating to you and you want access to the class that Leisha just taught, um, all of the members get access to the past classes. And the end of the year is a great time to join because you're getting a preview into the following, into 2024, and you're also getting all of the classes from last year. So um, check it out. If that's of interest, I'll link it in the comments. And then moving forward, um, um, just to to kind of, you know, get to this personalized experience, I would love to for you to say from your words, what happens when we didn't know about this, when we didn't do it the way that we want to now, or a loved one has gone through a process that it, it disturbs us that we could have done something differently. Um, your, your sisterly words of wisdom there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this is something that I loved that we talked about in class because um, we might, you know, often, especially with human design, I find out some information or mechanics or like this, you know, the dying process needs this. And it's after the fact that something already else has been occurring for years or has occurred. Like someone died suddenly, someone was in a car wreck, someone, you know, there was some whatever thing where their body was not, they didn't, there was no option of that. Um, or, you know, we didn't know. And even if they, you know, died on their deathbed surrounded by everyone we didn't realize and maybe they weren't the 24 hour you know the, the 72 hours of not being disturbed was not possible because we didn't know yeah um, and so to me the the zoomed out perspective is just is first of all forgive ourselves for what we did not know yeah because we could not have done anything else for what we did before we knew when we right. know better we can do better but before we know better how could we do better so there's a whole peace in life over and over with forgive ourselves for what we did not know now that we know 
we can do better. But also um, who are, the, like we were saying, like we cannot know any of this, this is all unknown. So how, even though the information in human design might even say, this is what happens if it's disturbed, this is what happens if it's not disturbed. And you know, you might feel kind of weird about the, if it is disturbed, it's like, but how do we know that? Like that was their path. I, for me, I'm, I'm, I can feel over and over and see in the pattern and have experience that it's always, that is the correct thing. Like if somebody was disturbed before 72 hours, if, you know, there was a sudden death or something, that was their contribution. That was their path. That was the, in the bigger scheme of all the different geometries and different things that are working that we cannot know or ever even comprehend. That was what was meant to happen. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes the like acceptance of that limitation you know, so that you can transcend it, which part of that is forgiving ourselves for what we did not know. You know? Yes. So to me, yes. it's like, we cannot know that that wasn't, you know, because going into like, if they didn't get 72 hours, then, and maybe their personality crystal wasn't able to go back up to the consciousness field, we might have a lot of judgment around what that means, but mm -hmm. that's, that's also affecting things on earth. And perhaps that's part of the path of like the other consciousness of beings that are still here on earth with a body that can express and can affect other things and alchemize their own traumas and experiences into a higher consciousness that that mm -hmm. then does go up. So to me, it's all contributing and connected. So, yeah. Well, and it's an opportunity to not let the mind take okay. over. You know what I mean? It's like this Perfect constant reminder. Point. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, what a great um, opportunity to practice that pause in between the thought and the response and the ideas about, about, you know, I mean, we can't control this universe and we're surrendered to it and we, we can't know what we, the uncertains and the unknowables. And so the, I think the idea for me is just about being peace with what is and surrendering to whatever that process is and knowing it doesn't make it easier for us to necessarily accept, but it might be like, well, if I knew that yoga class was scheduled at 11, then I might want to go. But if I didn't yeah. know it, yeah. then yeah, I couldn't know. go to it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so I would love to just switch gears and um, share on a personal level how your family worked with some of these concepts um, with your sweet mother, um, Brendy. And so Brendy, I knew Brendy and I, I, I know that she's smiling down as we're sharing some of this. You know, and so I really appreciate your bravery and courage to um, share it and your your whole family's uh, openness about your process with it. So I know it's going to give some people some ideas and um, just walk us through what you did. That experience. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, first, I, I just want to like Tiffany, you know, has been there for a long time. She knew my mom over many experiences for many years. Like, I mean, baby showers in the family, like you know, just so many things that, you know, that she knew her well. Um, and my mom, of course, loved you, Tiffany, and you loved her and there was a connection there. Yeah. We always feel like our moms would have been just yeah. like best friend. They're so similar. We feel like they're doing things together now and enjoying their daughters. Oh yeah. Watching they're their smoking daughters cigarettes and leaving Navajo. <laughs> they're <leaving>. totally, totally <laughs> smoking cigarettes. Um, and they have like Guatemalan fabrics and various, yes. you know, Native American things. So it's, yeah, they're very similar. So there's a kindred, you know, spirit there. So we could totally do a whole investigation on that of like, are they at the same, in the same Godhead and all these things. Like oh. that. that could be fun. Yes. Um, but with, with my mom, I, I just want to note that when, um, when my mom was going through her dying process, you, Tiffany, you and, um, your roommate, or best friend, childhood mm -hmm. friend, who's also my friend did an altar, um, for her, like in New Mexico and did kind of a whole ritual thing, to, you know, of peace and love and blessings and, um, transition, you know, all the the kind of the right correct transition and things during that time and I mean I still have those rocks like oh. I think they're in my on my window still in my bedroom so uh, oh. brought from that so that was hugely impactful and I feel like probably contributed to her correct bardo experience as well you know well let me um, add to that that place where we were was um one of the hot springs but it it was a place where people went of all tribes of all nations to and they would put down their weapons and this was a place of peace 
Oh. So it was really, really oh sick. Gosh. And even, like we haven't actually talked a lot about that. We really yeah, have so it, like, you know. Maybe we can put it, put a, put that on the agenda for sure. For sure. Yeah. And that night, we weren't really supposed to be where we were, and we, I, I was, um, I was just so inspired. You know, I'm like Betty Bright Eyes when it comes to new places <laughs> and asking questions. And so we're staying at this place that we've stayed at many, many times. I'd never heard the history of putting down the weapons and it being a place of peace for all nations to gather for healing. And uh, because I'm, I was so excited, I think about it, he, the manager offered us this private um, setting with, and they lit a fire and it was yeah, only fire. my friend and I. And so we had this private like mesa and at this beautiful place throughout time and history that was a place to gather for peace. And um, it was just the perfect moment to create an altar for your mom. And, um, and our parents, you know, we, we yeah. snuck you my mom and her dad. Her. Yeah. yeah. We've each lost a parent. So it was, it was just really, it was, you can't pick it up. I was, we were invited. We didn't know about it, you know, all of these things. And so, all lined up. yeah. So well, Brindy, and I showed, I showed Brindy the video and I showed my siblings the video and it like, it like touched all of us. Like she got to see that, you know, before. Yeah. so I didn't know that's that. just really powerful um moment and so with my mom it was um so she we, we it was already on the path of like she you know th this was kind of a quick few month process but during that I mean I had already told her about human design I had a, this was two years ago that she died so it was before that that I told her about human design she she would listen to me and we would talk about it and all that kind of along the way and so then as as we started into this kind of dying um few months I went and did my investigator thing. You know, I'm an investigator in human design in my profile. And I went and did all the, you know, took every class, listened to every audio that I could access at that time. I'm definitely not an expert on Bardo or don't do Bardo readings. I just want to clarify. Yeah. Um, right. But just, you know, but we can definitely, you know, I explore and I get the general thing. So I took all these notes and I kind of shared with her. Um, and she's a, uh, she was a five, one emotional manifesting generator. So I was like, just read it, take your time, you know, the emotional thing, like, but I would love to do this to honor your life, to, you know, honor you. And so it took a couple of weeks, she read it. And then she was like, leash, you know, I read that and I don't really know about it. I mean, she was very metaphysical and like open-minded. So she was just kind of like, I don't really know leash. Like, I don't really get all of it, but like, go ahead. Like, I won't care. I, I think that I'll, I mean, I'll be dead. So I won't really care, which is funny because that's what Ra Uruhu's mom said to him. <laughs> like when, when his mom was dying, he's like, I don't care. Go ahead. I'll be dead. It won't matter to me. But he's like, yeah, it will. You're going to care. Um, <laughs> yeah. You're going to care, but you won't have the mouth to speak that at that time. So, um, so yeah, so I, what I was able to do, um, so I, I, being kind of who I am, I like collected all this data, not only from classes, but from, you know, people that have been in human design for a very long time and had, ex had done Bardo processes with their family or loved ones and things. I kind of saved all that information. So I had some additional detail. Um, and I asked my, one of my teachers who had lost both of her parents at different times years before, um, really specifics about her process and she had done a cremation service that she found in California that um they she you know, shared all the information with me that basically um kept the person's body for like more than three days or you can ask for that or whatever in refrigeration so that it wasn't you know mutilated or mutated or whatever physically um for three days and mm -hmm. so I knew that was an option because some, some human design people have sat with mm -hmm. the body for three mm -hmm. days where, you know, and that is, you, we see that in a lot of traditions. We see that in, you know, in some ancient um, practices and things, but I did not feel equipped <laughs> to do that. And um, they weren't in Texas in August. They weren't in Texas. In right. The, right. And, and they were further along in their experiment. And I mean, right. you know, down the road, I may do something like that. And I mean, even now I'm more comfortable with that than a few years ago, but mm -hmm. it requires a whole other kind of preparation. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was able to, you know, and I talked to mom about it and I found this green cremation place here in Austin where they use, you know, like muslin instead of plastic and like all these different beautiful things. And there's all these options with, 
you know, a tree being planted and different things. So, um, so I did that. And the, in Texas, I will say that part of the like death certificate process, I think it's like 10 days or something. So, yeah. so in Texas, it's like, it's kind of automatically happens if there's a cremation service. Now, I don't really know about like, if you're going embalming, if you're doing, you know, kind of all those practices, but for me, the, the cremation mm. service, and I just communicated, I didn't say, well, like in Bardo, and then like, here's human design. And like, that's not ne- like, to me, that was not necessary. Was, and they asked, they're like, it, can you tell us why, you know, three days? And I was like, it's, it's in our beliefs and our different practices that we would like to, you know, give that way. two hours before it's processed and I mean my siblings were kind of like not in the know but they're like yeah sure leash like we, and I was like is it okay if I speak on our behalf because it's important to me so just saying there's like a translation there that can sometimes be needed to and your whole family to. lives in in like full consent and trust they so it's, it's not easy but it's easier if you're in agreement ahead of time correct um, yeah. and you're honoring someone and I, one of the things you brought up in class is this is even something that could you could put into your will uh that yes. you could discuss with your family about yourself uh of course you're not going to push that on anybody else but you had the opportunity to have these um conversations ahead of time and so i thought that was a really powerful um thing you know yeah. Yeah. And I want to, um, I want to point back to that because that's a great point. And I, and I, something that I realized that, um, so not only did, you know, so she was given the three days after the moment of death, but at the moment of death, all four of her kids were holding her hand, touching her. Um, and there's this, you know, and again, we see this in a lot of lineages, a lot of cultural pieces, a lot of ancient wisdom. And this is aligned with that, which is there's a correction process that happens in the dying process. So you know, we can look at it different ways, but in the human design Bardo information, it says like, there's, you know, there's three phases that happen, which Tiffany mentioned, but it's a corrective process. So what, to where, like, to me, the interpretation and theme of that and sense felt sense that I have of it is it's like, almost like a zoom out. You see every lifetime you've had, you've seen every experience you just had in this lifetime and all the different interactions and where it all, and it kind of like it almost like aligns out regardless of trauma experiences and the way you saw things and like whatever, any pain or anything, it's like, oh, I get it. So if you're allowed that 72 hours, that corrective process completes. So the death that all that consciousness then can go back up to that consciousness field. And that personality crystal then chooses the next life from the clean correction place. Instead of, I didn't finish my barter process. Now I'm distorted in the next life that I'm choosing and, you know, and so then it can kind of go down lineages. And this is, this is deep stuff that I've learned from other people that have studied this, not me. Yeah. Um, so I love that. And I felt like when I was touching her, so, and then, and then I see this thread in other shares of people that have gone through Bardo experiences with their loved ones. Like I could feel the correction process happening, but then what also happened is I then get that corrective process still in my life like my living life benefits from my loved ones dying correctly now. And I can really feel there's been like very rapid and like complete and entire, like you said, galactic transformation generations backwards and forwards is how it feels in my own life since my mom died. And I I don't think that I could have, it wouldn't have been that same process without that gift of her correct dying. So I just was I mean, it's life-changing, ironically, you know? Um, Yeah, so I just wanted to kind of point to that corrective process and why and how it can still benefit us now, you know? And I I want to, I guess, I don't know if this is an overshare, but, you know, in terms of, as a working psychic medium for the last 10 plus years, I've seen a lot of grief, a lot of people and a lot of grief. I've experienced my own grief and it's, you've certainly had grief and I've certainly walked that with you. However, in my perspective, it, there's a smoother, there's a smoothness to it. Mm. You didn't stay like locked in some, uh, grief pattern. 
you know, that I have seen happen in other people. And I, I don't know if we can attribute it to this. You know, you and your mom had an open relationship, open conversations. You certainly had very rocky seasons and you certainly had very connected, loving seasons. So it's not like we can point to, well, that was a life well lived and I'm just feel okay about it. I don't, I don't think that, but what it felt like to me watching you, it's like, whoa, that, that was a smoother healing process than I've seen. You know, hundred percent. I have full body chills because I've, I mean, the grief was absolutely deep, sudden and yeah. uh, cutting. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's like, I was almost like given it was allowed to move through cleanly mm -hmm. and not because I feel like a lot of times we like don't understand it or there's regret or we don't it's somehow something it's not it's beyond mind that yeah. like people don't know how to process grief in the world you know right. like we're not taught that and so it's almost like I was given the like here's how to process it and it truly it's like I definitely feel a sadness sometimes but it's not like what I've seen in the pattern of grief when you lose a parent that you're close to where it's like, it's almost like I see it in my siblings still where they kind of like one has not been, both of them have not been able to like, it hasn't moved through in the same way. And that's kind of the collective pattern too. It doesn't move through. It kind of stuck, gets stuck, mm -hmm. you know, somehow. And like, then it, you almost like when you think of them, you have to like cry every single time. Not mm -hmm. that that's not correct too. No, right. Just, yeah. Cause I can access that at any time that, you know, but it feels right the way it happened. It feels yeah. right that she had to go. It feels right because of what it has allowed like in me. It feels it's strange to even try to verbalize it. So I'm glad yeah. you brought it up because it yeah. does feel like I have a different relationship with the grief and with her dying and being able to even like if it had been before human design, I probably or hadn't done the Bardo or didn't know or whatever, I'd probably be crying right now talking yeah. about it. Like right. not able to even express anything about her you know um but yeah that's such a great observation like it does feel like there's something with that in in me with the experience yeah awkward awkward pause <laughs> let, that, let that hang there for gravitas no but it's true I mean I do feel like it's still potential for like it's almost like to me, there's, you can do things with this, even if it's been 10 years since you lost a parent, 20 years, whatever, like one year, it doesn't like, even if you didn't know, there's still, this can transform that experience for you, whether they were given the 72 hours, demon, do not disturb or not dungeons and dragons or not. You know? <laughs> um, so I love the, do you want to, can I, um, yeah, I was going to talk about like what to do with this now. Yeah, please. But is there yeah. any, okay. Uh, so like for me, um, well, first I love how you alluded to like, to me, I think of it as allies. Like we can't, we can't really die ourselves. Like, unless we do something where it's like, we're going to go out and be in a field and, but you'd almost have to be naturally ready to die. It's Which a thing. So you need allies in Siberia. It happens in, you know, it, it, that is, that is in an places. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, and so there are some, but it's almost like most of us don't really have that right. set up when right. death is knocking. So right. it's almost like having <laughs> allies is important. So now if, if you're listening to this, like if you took the class, if you want to go back and listen to it, this, mm -hmm. you are now like, we now are kind of like stewards of the consciousness field. We know how important it is. And not only do I like, will I be writing like all my friends and family, like know that I would like that if that's my option, the 72 hours. Yeah. Um, but I will make sure that others get that too. So it's almost like we need those allies of death. We need those death doulas. We need those keepers of the kind of, of the keys, you know, yeah. um, like this to, yeah, to the Noted. Channel Got it. Human design <laughs> um, and I, there's this symbol, which we're not showing symbols here, but um, there's a symbol in, from Africa and it has a whole lineage and meaning culturally for that, because that's, you know, a whole journey with like African culture and the way that it, all the different things have gone since then, but it's called Sankofa, S-A-N-K-O-F-A. Mm -hmm. And it means go back and get it. It's a bird that is um, like reaching, it's moving forward, but it's reaching back to get that golden egg. Um, and so if you've had a death 
and this was not, you're just now learning this now, or if you still have grief or traumas or painful memories, any of it, that's, that is the golden egg that you go back, you get it so that you can bring it into the forward process. Right. So it's like reflecting on your own, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. that popped up. reflecting on, you know, the Bardo process, reflecting on your own correction since their death. If, you have a corrective, you know, a, a bardo that has happened, or sorry, a death that's happened that's still there for you in grief. Forgive yourself for what you did not know. Mm -hmm. That's kind of going back and getting the golden egg of that experience, you know. Mm -hmm. um, share with others the 72 hour process. Again, you can say just like everything I'm reading, there's a three, there's a theme of giving people three days before you process the body. I'd like that to happen for me. You know, mm -hmm. even that's practical, just, um, allow others the bardo process if you're if you have that option and there's different ways you can do that and then just contemplating you know your previous understanding of death and dying loved ones who have passed on your you know what encounters you've had with kind of like the other side the consciousness on the other side of the material plane mm -hmm. um and of course you can explore all of this you know in sessions or in the membership and things like that would you add anything to that tip no, I was just thinking about like how beautiful it is that your family was in agreement and how many families I have read for that were not. Mm -hmm. And the gift of this like golden egg and the Sankofa, um, you know, even, even the imperfections are perfect. Even the, um, the disagreements on handling death and dying, you know, even that is is destined in a way. Um, and so I would say, you know, if you're in a family that's in disagreement, you know, all, the only thing that you can do is control yourself, you know, in terms, I don't mean control yourself, but adjusting your mindset, right? Adjusting your prayers. You can always talk to your loved one's highest self, no matter what, through time and space, before and after and future and present and past and all of the places. And so if you're in that a very, very, very uncomfortable place of, I want this to happen, but my family doesn't, even my loved one doesn't. And I want them to do it. Like if you're in that very, very uncomfortable place, you can always have the practice of talking to their highest self and just being honest, saying, if I'm honest, you know, with myself and with you, this is what I wanted for you. And it's hurt, it's hurting me and I'm going through a grief about it. And so I, uh, I just encourage you to get right with yourself on this thing. Um, and to know that we don't have all the answers, that we're here to share some information and knowledge and uh, ideas so that uh, anybody going through this process has more options than maybe we had before. Um, so I think, do you mind if I read that quote that you pulled out yeah, from yeah. The, the reflector? So this is a, a person who's a four six reflector and they've been a student of Ra since uh, 99. And so I'm not gonna read the whole long thing, but the part that I, th that I think is a nice ending impression here. Uh, and they're talking about going through this experience with their brother. And they say, it gave me the clue that the best way to go through the grief of losing a beloved one is to be able to sit with them for the three days of Bardo, which accelerates the process of grief while at the same time, being able to participate in the journey of the beloved person from here to there, instead of being cut off and denied this most important part of their dying process, which actually seemed to me like a birth really. And to understand not mentally, but existentially that death is not the end, but the culmination of a particular life's journey of our soul experiencing consciousness in form in so many different ways again and again and again. And death offers an often badly needed and welcomed rest. And who knows what other goodies in between those travels on planet earth. My brother's sequence was four, five, six, and I got to experience it along with him. So good. So, um, you know, I just... There are many people that have different perspectives on this, and the theme is, is, tends to be a sense of peace. And I know that there are many cultures that sit and do uh, prolonged celebrations of life. And so maybe your culture is already doing this in its own way, organically, naturally. Um, but I hope that you've learned something. I hope that you have uh, taken some new ideas with you. And, uh, and thank you so much, Lisa, for just being so open and vulnerable and sharing your experience with with all of this. I really appreciate it. 
<laughs> All right, guys, we'll stick around the podcast for some more interesting topics. This October should be a lot of fun. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. You can always email me tiff at tiffanyharlick.com. I'm happy to entertain or bring on a guest that you might like. So, uh, all right. Until next time, guys. Thanks again and namaste. Thank you.